Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Access Asia. Here's what's coming up on the program. Getting arrested in Japan has been dubbed hostage justice. We take you inside a Japanese prison where the rules are notoriously strict, drawing condemnation from rights groups. Work less, gain more. New Zealand's four-day work week leads to a boost in efficiency at one company. Our reporter examines why. And the suicides of two K-pop stars in South Korea unveils the painful side of being an idol. Both singers attracted online hate after standing up for women's rights. It's been just over one year since French businessman Carlos Ghosn was arrested in Japan, spending 129 days in detention for receiving bail. His case has drawn attention to Japan's prison system, where guards don't carry weapons and inmates rarely misbehave. Authorities claim that's because of a strict set of rules, which are enforced without exception. We bring you a clip from a documentary aired on France Television's Envoy Special with Babel Productions and Monte Francis. No one has ever escaped from this prison. In 2009, for the first time in Japan, a daycare center opened its doors on the prison grounds and welcomed children from a neighboring village. A model prison without violence, where the inmates seem to be respected. However, an observer is quick to discover that the rules are very strict. They are the same rules in effect for all prisons in Japan. Never called by their names, the prisoners each have numbers which they have to shout out whenever called on by the guards. Their every move is tightly controlled and disciplined like the military. They obey without question. The prisoners are not allowed to talk or communicate with one another. The only exception to that rule is during their 30 minutes of daily exercise. Everything is strictly timed. Their meals last 13 minutes. When the inmates finish their meals, they have to wait for the sound of a timer. Work is mandatory. During this design class, students are forbidden to speak directly to the teacher without permission. Inmates are not allowed to draw the prison or talk about their personal stories or their feelings. For an outsider, it's impossible to know what they think. A four-day work week is the dream of many, but in New Zealand, a new initiative has made it a reality. Workers are still considered to be working full time and their salaries stay the same. But how does a shorter week affect productivity? Kemi Nedelec and our partners at France 2 take a look. New Zealand could be at the forefront of a work revolution. One company, Perpetual Guardian, has implemented a four day work week, even though employees continue to be paid for five. The over 200 workers at this estate planning company get to choose which day of the week to take off. Regan Storer chose Wednesday. You've got two days at the start of the week and then you've got a midweek break. Um, and then obviously you come back for another two days, so it's just having a break. Employees don't have to work any longer on the other four days, get paid less or try to make up for lost time by working at home. <laughs> Adrian Chapman, along with his colleagues, has changed how he works. His focus isn't on FaceTime, it's on productivity. Previously, we, you, know, you have a, a culture of doing everything by email. Um, so you spend an hour composing an email. Um, it goes to 20 different people. All 20 people have to read that email, they have to respond. Now we encourage people to actually walk up and talk to people rather than emailing. 
Hello, Andrew. How are you? Thank you. Good. Thank you. This is the man behind it all, Andrew Barnes, CEO of Perpetual Guardian. He read an article claiming that British workers were only productive two and a half hours per day and Canadians for just 90 minutes. He thought about how that applied to his own company. People come into the office, they have a chat, they have a cup of coffee, they surf the internet, uh, they do some emails, get down to work, somebody disturbs them. He decided to test out reduced hours for eight weeks. If the work is completed in four days, then employees get the fifth day off. What we found was that engagement, loyalty, empowerment scores went up 40%. People's stress levels dropped about 15%. Overall productivity went up, and more people said they were better able to manage their workload working four days rather than five. That surprised us. A bit of a chat. Ever since, Barnes has been preaching the four day work week to the rest of the world. Here, he shared the lessons he's learnt with future business leaders, students at Yale. He set up a charity to help other companies make the switch, and he's even written a book on the benefits. Meanwhile, Regan Storer makes the most of her free time. Her unusual work arrangement is the envy of her friends. So jealous, because I'm a lawyer, and you know the model is we charge by the hour, so um, I don't imagine we can cut down our hours much. <laughs> it's very jealous. Countries around the world are now considering abandoning the five-day work week and joining what they hope will be a productivity revolution. Next to South Korea, where in the span of just six weeks, two beloved K-pop singers ended their lives. Their recent deaths have sparked soul-searching in the country, where female stars are expected to adhere to puritanical expectations. Those who don't become victims of online attacks, which can take a mental toll. Yuka Royer with the story. Her last Instagram post showed her in her bed with the caption, Good night. Hours later, Kuhara was found dead at her home. She's believed to have taken her own life at just 28 years of age. It's so sad that she had to suffer from vicious, inhumane comments just because she was a celebrity. One of the biggest K-pop stars, Ku is believed to have been a victim of relentless cyberbullying, as well as attempted revenge porn. A note was found detailing the vicious online messages she had received about her relationships with men. The singer and actress had spoken out against online attacks after she opened up about her battle with depression. She also vowed to fight cyberbullying after her close friend and fellow K-pop star Suli committed suicide in October. Online violence is a serious problem in South Korea's highly wired society, and celebrities are easy targets. Celebrities tend to try and avoid drawing negative attention and often opt not to press charges. This sends the wrong message to online attackers and makes them think they can make malicious comments and get away with it. The police want to tackle the problem seriously and run a public awareness program. In many cases, people turn a blind eye to cyberbullying because they're afraid of becoming the next victim if they intervene. I think we need to establish a social system in which a third party can help the victim. Female artists already face constant scrutiny by South Korea's patriarchal society, which expects young women to be pure and chaste. The K-pop industry is known to have strict rules for its stars, including dating bans and Spartan diets. It's not illegal for women to drive in Afghanistan, though it is still a rare sight. And those who do get behind the wheel can face stares and harassment from male drivers. That's why one Italian NGO has set up a van service driven by women and for women. Shirley Sipon has more. If you believe you know what bad traffic is, look at the streets of Kabul and think again. But traffic jams are just one of the difficulties Pink Shuttle's drivers have to deal with every day. 
There are some young boys and men who drive past us very fast and want to somehow frighten me. But we got used to this routine. They've done it so much. I'm personally not scared anymore. Pink shuttles were set up by an Italian NGO. They carry women and their children across Kabul, where walking around can be dangerous for women. The company's four female drivers were selected out of 100 candidates. I've always liked to do special and extraordinary jobs that no one has done before. And when I was told they were looking for women to drive women in a minivan, I was very interested. When the Taliban took over Afghanistan in the late 1990s, they violated women's rights, banning them, among many things, from working and driving. Since they were pushed out, women are allowed to drive, but few do, due to dangers, including terror attacks and harassment. This is a personal and basic right. You can be your own driver and commute the way you like. Therefore, it is better that the number of women drivers rises and it becomes more established and normal among people and society. The number of women drivers is higher every year. 275 women have clinched their license in the first half of 2019. And Pink Shuttle's drivers are so enthusiastic, they're thinking of starting a transport company of their own. And finally, we bring you a look at Myanmar's unconventional Ferris wheels, powered by people. At fairgrounds and festivals across the country, young men appear to defy gravity, turning the 20-meter high rides with just their bodies. For some, training in this agility and coordination begins as children. The teams work nine months straight, earning around 100 U.S. dollars a month until the monsoon season begins. That's all for this edition of Access Asia. We'll see you next week, and we leave you with these images.